Hi, this is Gary with another Friday Wrap from the Power of Prudence, where we bring you advice and expertise for your personal security concerns. This week, we're gonna talk about personal security at your college student's place of residence, or if not college student, maybe of that age, where they're living for the first time on their own, often in communal situations. Generally, you know, we, we look at three types of residences, a dormitory, some people live in uh, fraternity houses or sorority houses, and then there are people that share apartments or homes with other people. With dorms and, and fraternities, those are bigger organizations, so some of the security precautions and rules that are designed to, to keep people that are residing there safe are um, left up to committees and, and some and schools and the security for the school. So you'll have to work your way through what those are, but every student, every one of your children that resides in one of those places should know the criteria that we're gonna go over today, and there'll be four, that, and they should know what the policies and rules are regarding them. If they live in uh, an off-campus place, uh, such as was the case with uh, these, these uh, college students in Moscow, Idaho, then they have a lot more agency and say so over what the rules are and what the other people they share that residence with do that governs the personal security of everybody staying there. So again, we're gonna go over four key areas. The first is access control. And when we talk about access control, who does have access to where you live? When I look at access control, if it's somewhere like a dormitory or a frat house, I first look at the outer control, like the front doors, side doors, fire exits, who has access to there? Are they, is it open and then just the rooms have individual locks or do you have to go have an access code or key to get in the main door as well as residences? So know what the controls are for the outer. If you're at a house, that means you're, you know, the locks to the doors. Are they key locks? Are they cipher locks? And then um, you wanna know how that works, what it is, and who has access. Then you have your inner sanctum. So that is your personal bedroom. Now, often you're sharing a room with, it, hopefully no more than one other person, but you share a room. So you really need to know and try to control as much to a much extent as possible who has access to that inner sanctum. No one should be staying in a room that does not have at least key or cipher lock access. And you should make rules with your roommate that anytime you're not in there, that that door is locked. It may be inconvenient if you're running down the hall to you know the bathrooms down the hall or whatever, but that room should always be locked. And then part of that access control is how do you deal with the turnover of people that have access, meaning somebody that has a key or knew the cipher code to get in either the outer or inner doors. Like maybe you have a housemate that moves. Well, hey, did their key get collected? Did somebody have a locksmith come and change the locks in case that person made a copy or you know forgot that they made copies and gave to a couple friends and then now they have that or especially it's easy to change if it was if it's a cipher lock or you know a combo lock uh, that has a keypad or the press buttons because that can be changed so you know who has that both for your outer sanctum and your inner sanctum. If you don't have control of who has access on the outer part, you certainly should have control 
over who has access to your inner sanctum. And the second thing about knowing the physical layout and how the controls work is know who has access. You know, it's one thing you may live in a dormitory and there are common areas that are open to anybody. So you may, you know, routinely run into strangers in, in, the, in those areas. But that shouldn't be the same in your inner sanctum or in your room. In your room, and you have a roommate, you guys have a right to know who has access. I think my, my opinion is that if you're giving the cipher code to a boyfriend, a girlfriend, or friends, that should be agreed upon by both roommates, that neither has the authority to just randomly give out that code or an extra key to whomever they decide, unless that's agreed upon by both people. And, you know, if, if there's, you need to know who is routinely coming in and who might come in. You know, it's not good. I, I don't want my daughter to come into her bedroom sometime and see some guy there that she has no idea who it is. He might say, well, your roommate is down the hall, went to the restroom, but how do we know that? So, you know, you need to know who has access, particularly to your inner sanctum. The third thing is with the people, especially the roommates uh, and housemates, share information and concerns. What if a friend of yours has a stalker? That stalker, if they can't get access to the person that they're stalking, I've had cases where they loom outside the door. Maybe they don't have access to, to get in the outer door, but then they wait there till they see somebody else come in and come in behind them. Or that they impose themselves or threaten a person to let them in. So it would help if, for example, if, if uh, someone became concerned about a stalker and you shared that information and, that, and the people that live with you were able to see a picture of that person, then they would know, hey, I come home and see this guy sitting in our driveway in his car or lurking around outside. I don't get out of my car and come to the door. I go away and you know, if necessary, go to campus security or call the police or, or get assistance, but share that information. What about threats? What if you've been receiving threats online? Anybody that shares your residence, your house, or uh, somebody has said some things that are threatening, you know, boyfriends and girlfriends sometimes have bitter breakups and uh, sometimes somebody wants to do somebody harm there. Well, I would like to know if one of my housemates has anything like that going on because that poses a potential threat to everybody that stays there. And it allows us to amp up our game, to double check locks and windows and who's coming in and out to make sure that we're safe. And the other is share information if there's somebody that makes you uneasy. God gave you instincts. Sometimes there's somebody looking at you in a way or following you around in a way that makes you uneasy. You need to heed those instincts and share that with somebody else. Don't keep it hidden and let that person be the person that comes to your place of residence to commit uh, a crime. And the fourth uh, thing is share photos. I've, I'm, I'm not a fan of everybody that wants to put their whole lives on Facebook. You know, there's only so many pictures of your last meal uh, that you had that I really care about seeing on Facebook. But for kids, particularly a college kid, I believe that it's great to take pictures of your friends and particularly the people in your inner circle or that are close to you. 
And a selfie, people like to do selfies, take that selfie, post it, because I would like to be able to see, okay, identify, here's this person that I see as a part of my child's life, and here's what they look like. And, and to be honest, that also helps if something happens, that then we can go back and have pictures of who people are. There's a record. I do this a lot with families that have uh, children uh, studying overseas. It's really important to get those photographs of the people that you are in contact with routinely documented. And on that, particularly somebody that has access to your inner sanctum. If you have a roommate that has given a boyfriend or girlfriend permission to be in your inner sanctum, then hey, get a picture. And, and you should have arrangements with your roommates and housemates that anybody that they're giving permission to come in and out of that house, particularly if they're not around, that it's shared with everybody, agreed upon by everybody, and there is a picture. And you know you can see with the case in Idaho um, how those things could could be uh, of a lot of assistance in getting to the bottom of what happened. You know, college and even if you're not in college at that age is an interesting time where you know people are on their own. They no longer have parents living with them, giving them rules. Um, and they're gonna push limits. We've all, I did, risky behavior at that age. Uh, fortunately, you know, I made it through all my mistakes, but um, we want other people to learn from our mistakes and share our experience so they do, so that they live a safer life. Anytime that you are at any place, whether that's parties, a frat house, a bar where you mix, particularly at that age, the potential for sex and alcohol or drugs, you have greatly increased the potential for some sort of violence. And, you know, I'm not saying don't do that. You know, you, you, you make your risk. Hey, I, I've been to some really shady bars and I've been in bars where people were shot and uh, stabbed and, uh, you know, and I'm, I'm not recommending that to anybody. So I'm not saying don't ever take a risk, but you have to understand that when you mix those things, there are risks. There's always somebody that feels jealous, got left out, feels scorned, feels maligned, feels bullied. And those are all, if it hits the right person, potentials for violence and murder, uh, or definitely sexual assault. So, you know, keep that in mind and take risk when you, you know, have fun and take risk when necessary, but take the safety precautions that provide you a little margin on the sides of that risk, you know? Uh, if you don't do anything to take precautions and do one of the four things we talked about, access control, know who has access, sharing information and concern, and sharing photos. If you do those, you do give yourself that margin. And uh, for parents out there that are wearing like, how, how do I have control? My, 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 my child's of age, they're out on their own. Hey, Sometimes you have to let go. You don't have control. You can advise them. Uh, however, uh, as a parent, I will be that parent that, hey, if I'm financing your residence, I have at least certain requirements. You can do the parties. You can do whatever. But these four areas, I, I want to see that you have a handle on all four of them and that my continued support is based on that. Hey, these are just a, a few tips to help your college age kid be safer in their place of residence. If you found this information helpful and then would like to share it, please 
like, share, and follow on the social media tabs. Thanks.